During the keynote at the UX conference in Las Vegas, an attendee asked Jacob Nielsen whether UX can help in the procurement process of buying enterprise solutions. And I think historically there have been very, a small number of examples of that. I was even personally involved in one of those like 25 years ago uh, when we were trying to buy some various software packages for our technical writers in the company I worked at. And we actually had a few writers come in and try to write you know, some documentation of different packages and looked at their experience. But it's very rare. It's very rare that this is done. And I do think it's more so something that will happen in terms of reviews and it's necessarily in terms of actual assessment or testing at the procurement stage uh, because it's, it's a little bit much work to have to do, let's say, usability testing of each of, let's say, 10 packages you're trying to buy, unless you're an extremely big company, in which case it would pay off probably to do it. But in most cases, we would more have to rely on either industry associations or um, the, it's sad to say, like the computer trade press has almost died. So that would, in the old days, have been a good source for doing studies of usability of software, but today it's not quite so much so, unfortunately. So I, I do think it's very important for uh, consider, you know, total cost of ownership is sort of the standard phrase, but total cost of ownership is to a very large extent dominated by, by two things. First of all, the training cost, and I've always said that uh, the training budget should be considered to be like a big juicy pork chop for UX to eat, because the cost of training is the cost of bad design. I mean, not maybe 100%, that might all for many very complicated things, there might still need to be some training, but you should definitely always expect you can cut training in half by better design. And then the other, even worse part of total cost of ownership is productivity losses for years and years and years as people do all these workarounds and they don't use features the correct way or they don't even use some features at all because they can't understand them and so forth and so forth. Um, but this rolls back to this question of how can we get the procurement guys to consider this because this is one of our, I think one of the reasons so much enterprise software is terrible is that the users and the buyers are two different people. Now for PC software, you know, the person buying, let's say Excel is the same person as the person using Excel and therefore if you can't make a pie chart, you're not going to buy it. Um, and Microsoft has therefore spent a lot of money on trying to make it so that you can make a pie chart. And for websites, it's even more so. When you go to a website, you are the one sitting there clicking the mouse. And you're either going to buy on that website or you're not. And if you can't understand it, you're not, and you can't find the product, you're not going to buy it, right? So usability is completely prime in those personal software and particularly in web use. Whereas for enterprise, uh, the people, who, the poor peons, you know, who have to use the thing, that's only next year. And they're not the guys who are sitting there trying to decide on to buy A uh, by B. But so we just got to make the people who make these purchasing decisions more aware of the long-term cost to the organization of buying uh, bad usability software, basically, bad, bad solutions, of which there are plenty. Enterprise software is the most terrible, poorly designed thing in the current universe.